On today's episode, we're answering the question, no, we're not because I'm on the wrong damn outline. What is the difference maker in how you approach that's getting people from that 8K a month, that 10K a month to those 20, 30, $50,000 a month without us literally losing our lives, right? Because the hustle culture is a thing. And we're already doing so much. The hustle culture is a thing that has been um, celebrated and uh, rewarded for ever since businesses have been uh, here and for thousands of years. The masculine energy of doing, 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 being, 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 uh, like being busy all the time is what is celebrated and it's this accumulation, this competition, this deep hunger for um, just always being in motion. And I'll tell you something, uh, I have had way too many conversations with women who will tap me on the shoulder after I've uh, you know, gotten off the stage or who've seen me wh- wherever and they'll pull me to the side and say, um, I, I heard you speak about leverage. I, 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 I hear that you take women to a million, uh, but I'm about to uh, throw in the towel on my business. And I'll say, you know, for example, how much are you making? I know we're just getting to know each other, 150 or 250, but it's unsustainable. I work every night after I put the kids to bed until midnight. I, I, I don't even know what it's like to go on vacation without my laptop, all that, all that. It's not worth it. I'm working more than I would ever agree to working for somebody else. And I pay myself less than I would ever agree to be paid for all the work that I do. And um, what I have said to these countless women is that you are approaching this in a very masculine way. So other people might be teaching a form of leverage, but they're not doing it the way that we're teaching our ladies. And that is to understand that everything that works in nature works as a combination of yin and yang, uh, feminine, masculine energy. If if you look at the energy of the masculine, it's a doing energy. It's an action energy. It is um, it's a linear energy. It is a solo energy. You, you, I don't have to explain this to you. Um, the feminine energy, which we don't really spend a lot of time thinking about is a being energy. It is an attraction, attracting energy rather than a pushing energy. It is, uh, an intending, a feeling, a nurturing, a loving, a resting energy. And while it's been ridiculed, at best in business for hundreds of years, um, or however long you wanna say, you have to understand that um, the things that work are a combination of both. Yet we women who have been, who are ambitious women, who are forces of nature, who want to be rewarded, have understood. I, I, I'm, all, I'm not saying this is the truth. This is my truth from, from working with so many thousands of women each year. And what I've noticed is that they go full speed ahead in their masculine energy because they want, and I'll break it down about what that looks like. I know this sounds theoretical, but first the, the philosophy of it, and then we can go into the nitty gritty and I can share lots of Um, insights uh, that are immediately applicable. But when we want to be rewarded as ambitious women, we go into our masculine do, 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 and we ignore all that makes us so powerful. Uh, An example of this is if you look outside and you imagine that we're just going to have sunshine 24 hours a day, bright, hot sunshine, it will not work. We will not grow vegetables and fruits. They're, they're, everything needs rest. Conversely, if everything was pitch black, nighttime, all the time, we would not grow vegetables and fruits. There would be no sun. So you understand we need both. And when we, this is not something that we put on on the website at Boltar. We don't say, oh, we approach it, you know, 50. It's not that. It's understanding that when you cut off a, a part of all your power, as a woman, the power of attraction, the power of intention, the power of manifestation, the power of, of having downtime, the power of the strategic do less better 
um, when you cut that off, you're just running on fumes and, and an oil lamp without uh, oil in it cannot shine. So that's the theoretical part. The, the, the more uh, pragmatic answer to your question, uh, Jenny, is to look at um, the fact that the 80-20 rule is very much at play in every business. In your life, you probably wear 20% of the shoes that you own, 20% of the clothes. You end up you know, probably getting the same 20% of foods from the supermarket. In your business, only about 20% of the things you do are creating 80% of the results, okay? Conversely, 80% of the way you use your time in your business is creating 20% of the money. So if you start thinking in terms of leverage, what is leverage where you, let's say, you know, you, you put a, a, a stick under uh, over a little, uh, another stick, shall we say, and you can, you can use leverage. You can use little effort to create big results. This is what we want to do in your, in your business. So when we can figure out, the ways to leverage every single aspect of your business, leverage your team, and I can talk more about that, leverage your systems, leverage your time. And I'm not talking about old school time management. I'm talking about very specifically stopping um, the busyness. And for example, I only work about three hours a day uh, at this. And I've, and I've been doing that for, for many years. Uh, and I've been at, at multiple seven figures a year for now 14 years. So I do know what I'm talking about in the sense that if we were to stop doing 80% of the things you're doing now and really focusing on the 20% that works, this is where your company continues to grow. Uh, your income continues to grow. Your impact, but also your downtime. And what it requires is a combination of your masculine and feminine right? The doing and the being, but it also requires that you stop uh, letting people hijack your time. You stop working on stuff that doesn't actually create results and that you see everything from this moment forward through the lens of leverage. I wanted to also note, because you said you primarily work with women and a few wonderful men and the same holds true for our podcast listeners. We have a lot of female listeners and a few amazing men. And what you're saying also holds true for men. Men need to tap into their feminine energy just as women need to tap into their feminine and masculine. It's Absolutely. everybody needs yes. both. Yeah, It's not just, just women. So I really wanted to clarify that because it's kind of a hard concept sometimes to wrap your head around that oh, I'm being really masculine right now, but I identify as, as female. Mm -hmm. So it can be maybe jarring for some people who haven't spent time learning and researching, especially as much as you have, right? Mm -hmm. And I just got off a call right before our time together today with um, our ladies that are on the leverage path to a million. Uh, and I told one of them, I said, this is the time to get into masculine. This is like, you got to go, go, go and set those strong boundaries and power through this thing. That's this obstacle. And, and then it's also time to schedule in some time for, um, using all of the other things that are not typically being used. And I say this to our lovely guys as well. One so, of the, oh, go ahead, Alison. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> we both have so many questions. Uh, how, how do you know when it's time to hop over into that masculine? How do you know when it's time to, to focus on the masculine or the feminine energy within yourself? So I'll give you an example. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go a roundabout way of answering your question. The reason um, my company is called Bold Heart is because it's a combination of the feminine, uh, which is the heart and the masculine. And, and I'll, I'll explain what that means. I ask people to put their ear to their heart and listen hard, 
right? What are they passionate about? What they want to create? How do they want to change people's lives or the world, et cetera? And then boldly go after what they want. And that bold piece, I believe, is the masculine. So I'll give you an example of something that happened not too long ago. There was this one woman who had been in our program before and, uh, and increased um, her, her results dramatically. And then she took a break and she came back. She was newly married with this guy who had a very masculine energy. And, and she'd been wanting to get back into our program for a few, um, a few years. And he always made it so that it was his final decision, even though it was her business. So I said, just because I've known you before, I'll jump on a, on a zoom with both you and your new husband. And I'm talking and I'm realizing this guy is going to bulldoze her and she's never going to be able to do what she really wants to do. And I went into, I went from being in my feminine to being in my masculine. And uh, this is what it looked like. So it does. So it sounds like John, you are, um, you are a really um, important guy. And my sense is that you are probably almost always the most powerful man in the room. Well, yes, Fabienne, that's the case. And, you know, really being feminine and all of that. And then I said, um, well, when it comes to taking women uh, from overwhelmed at six figures to seven figures with their life back, I'm the most powerful man in this room. Uh, <laughs> total blooper reel. Did it all come falling down? 